Hello, I'm Yuri Kuswelder. I'm a firmware engineer of Circle B, and I'm working on OpenBMC. I wanted to give an introduction to OpenBMC. So first, let's start off. What's a BMC? BMC is a baseboard management controller. A lot of people are confused, but is this APMI? Well, sort of. BMC is a separate computer on the motherboard. This picture shows it shows it really good. The the server processor here. It's got a dedicated RAM flash memory, a separate network, and it used to interface with the host. So it can provide you an APMI uh, or a REST API or Redfish maybe. Uh, it used to uh, give you some system error logging, like event logs, uh, post logs of the PIOs, or terminal monitoring, to see what sensor is overheating or whatnot. Um, power cycling to power off the server to reset it, give the warm or cold resets. And it could provide you a GUI or a command line like SSH or um, oh, web UI. So then, what's the OpenBMC? OpenBMC is an alternative for uh, a vendor BMC software. Uh, it's open source. It's an open source Linux distribution. And it's the idea is uh, to have a standard firmware image on the BMC. So it can run on any BMC, which has an uh, 8 speed. 2400, 2500, or 2600. It's a standard firmware image and it's based on layers. So everything is, uh, the idea is everything is open. Um, the source code is open. So uh, it uses Yocto. It's a small embedded Linux. And uh, the bootloader is also open. It's, it uses uh, U-boot to, to, uh, for using a bootloader. Uh, it has a growing community. It all started off with Facebook as an idea for an open source uh, firmware stack on the BMC and uh, IBM, Microsoft, Intel, Google, and a lot of other uh, great companies uh, start helping off with it. So what are the key features of OpenBMC? Um, so here's a lot of uh, features. Uh, one of the things is uh, power management to see uh, what, how many uh, watt is pulling on the, the host server. Uh, cooling to see how, uh, what the PWM is of the fans. LED indicators, inventory to see all the sensors, serial numbers or DIMMs or CPUs, event logs and post logs. It uh, provides some web-based user interface a lot of REST interfaces, so it's like uh, a normal API, but also Redfish, SSH, and a traditional APMI can still be used. Serial for LAN, which can be used over Redfish, Web UI, or SSH. Uh, KVM, sensor monitoring, power operation for power off the server, and uh, user management, so they have, uh, so you can add an intern or something. Um, to log into the BMC and don't have all the security rights like a, a root user would have. You can do a BMC or BIOS firmware upgrades by Redfish or the web UI, or virtual media to mount uh, like Ubuntu to uh, the USB, so uh, to a virtual USB stick. So the host thinks uh, there's an installation of Ubuntu, so you can install it without going physical to the data center to install it or you don't have to rely on a deployment server. And uh, a lot of features are still coming, so this is just the key features. Uh, this is just an overview of the OpenBMC. Well, then why not use the BMC software of the vendor? Um, well, extra features may cost extra. Uh, it's less innovative. When there's they released somehow uh, a new BMC software, um, they only put some security patches, but not all of them, just when a customer is in need, and uh, that's why it's less innovating. OpenBMC is rapidly growing because it's open source and a lot of more people are working, which they all have their own benefits of using it. Although it also uh, can provide more features. 
So that's why it's slower bug solving, that just the, the people working on the software is a lot smaller. Uh, and there's no lifetime support. Uh, we are using a lot of Leopard servers from Facebook and the end of life uh, is already announced and uh, since 2018 and the hardware is still pretty good but uh, no security patches so that's why OpenBMC would be a good uh, add-on for it. Uh, for example, so the what Defender is now using is Serial Overlon uh, Java based and that's not uh, it's not um, it's not supported anymore uh, on, uh, for example, on Chrome. So uh, you you just can't use Sol anymore only on APMI, and that will be a waste because uh, if you have serial overlay on a web UI or SSH, you can still use it and. Um, the server will be still good. Uh, comparison of Leopard and uh, Fendor. So you can see the firmware is not updated since March 2018 and OpenBMC is still updating. So uh, it would be a lot better to use that. AMI do doesn't get the web UI. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, OpenBMC is customizable, so you can add the web UI, but if you don't need it, it will be uh, use less memory, so you could remove it as well. APMI version is also a lot older. It doesn't get got an API, and uh, OpenBBC got also Redfish, so it's a lot more standard for the for the time living now. Also got serial of LAN, like we just discussed. It was only on a APMI. A uh, busy box with a lot of tools for development and usage and uh, AMI also got a really lot older version of it. And also SSH is maybe not even possible on vendor BMCs. So here's a comparison about multiple vendors of other things like uh, HP ILO or Submicro or the QCT software which also provided by the vendor uh, standard when you purpose the server. Um, so, most important things are things like Redfish, OpenBMC can provide, or uh, lifetime updates, and not uh, no extra software is required. You can just SSH it or use the web UI, and you got everything you need. So where are we now? We are developing OpenBMC on Leopard and Tioga Pass servers. Uh, we can use serial of LAN now, which you can see on the left or on the right uh, side of the screen, sorry. And also uh, KVM. So KVM is another way, uh, other way to uh, port a VGA over LAN. And, uh, and we can also provide Redfish, uh, REST or APMI still. So uh, you get a lot of interfaces and just for, uh, just in the software. You can use whatever you prefer. Other things that are really important, like power operations, we can reboot uh, the server or shut it down, uh, cold reset or an hard reset. Sensor and inventory we are working on. So uh, on the right, you can see uh, a lot of the mid plane sensors and also PWM uh, of the fence. It's currently on 100% uh, spinning. Uh, post logs and event logs. So, also here on the right, when the server is rebooting, it will prompt all the postcodes directly to serial of one, and also it will lock it. So you can see later on if it's hanging on a boot loop or anything is missing. Uh, also on the event logs, you can see if there's a sensing overruling, some kind of threshold. Um, yeah, so th those things are pretty neat. Uh, the roadmap. Where are we going to? We want to uh, the BMC and BIOS firmware upgrade over Redfish and the web UI. Uh, we want to add on virtual media, so we don't have to rely on deployment server. Uh, more field replaceable unit information about the CPU and uh, all the memory sticks. Um, so we can see if something is broken, what kind of serial number it has, um, how many memory uh, the computer now has things like that. 
and also more uh, sensors like uh, the temperature of the CPU, DIMM, VRMs, uh, what kind of what it is taking. Maybe you can even uh, overclock the server a bit to get the maximum out of it. And power management. So we can see how much uh, what the server is currently using. And even more, so these are just the key features we want to add for now. And uh, let's see what the timer will bring. <clears throat> Open beam single leopard. Uh, I want to see. Uh, I want to show you a live demo. Uh, there's still work in progress, so bear in mind that. So here we can log into the server. Nope. So directly on the, when you log in, you get all kind of information. <clears throat> so you can see it's a leopard server of the manufacturer Quanta, QST, with a serial number. And we can see uh, what kind of IP address it has, MAC address, uh, a firmware version of Circle B we are using, a firmware version based on OpenBMC Yocto. Uh, other things around like uh, sensors. I will just quickly go through it and uh, show you a bit about Serial Over One and Redfish. So it's getting all the sensor information so you can see a bit uh, like uh, the inlet temperature, outlet temperature, uh, the chipset, maximum temperature it's ever reached. Um, so this is not really reliable, it has to get another skill factor, but um, for the ID, you see the mid plane of the power supply, 12 volts, what upper critical it would have to give a lock. So we can go to the locks to show you it a bit. You can see oh, the whole system is on, this is the vent locks, postcodes, no nothing, I didn't reboot the server, so. Otherwise, it will give some postcodes here. I've recorded a video for Zero of a Long. Uh, let's see. Oh, here. So, I'll speed up the, uh, the booting process a bit because it was taking uh, otherwise a long time for this video. Um, so, I'm right now over the UART line, Zero of Long. The same BMC as you can see. So give sudo reboot. These are the postcodes that the BIOS will prompt up. So after a bit, it will uh, give some more postcodes and it will give you a login screen. If you uh, edit the BIOS a bit, it will also give you a BIOS screen here, so you can edit everything in the BIOS uh, you want. And also if you edit CRUB, it will also give some kernel information. So right now we are at the login screen. So as you can see, uh, it just communicate with the whole server, just like uh, you SSH it. Echo hello. So another thing about uh, Redfish, I have uh, written a real small bit of Python. So as you can see, it just uh, it's just a request for an API. And we got a BMC address, which is the same IP I just show you, and with some credentials. I'm just going through some uh, information of Redfish. So. The first thing is, uh, it will say, uh, this is an endpoint. Let's go to the endpoint. And it'll give you a lot of information about what endpoints there are. So uh, like uh, just see information, account information, uh, things like that. So just let's take chassis. See what kind of chassis there's uh, available on Redfish. Well, it currently shows there's only a motherboard of Leopard uh, installed. Well, that's true because I have to add the information about the CPU and uh, memory yet. So let's go to the Leopard baseboard. 
And after that, we can see a lot of information about the serial number. We just saw an overview on the web page. Uh, things like part numbers, uh, terminal information, sensors, yep, things like that. Manufacturer and the model. Just like APMI, only more structural with JSON uh, returns. So let's go to sensors, see what kind of sensors there are and what we can read. So here's the hot swap controller. Let's, let's look at it. The input power it currently has. Ah, it's reading uh, 61 watts currently. As you can see, the W of plot. And these are the thresholds it will have. So if you would have more than 500 uh, watts currently pulling, uh, it will give a threshold. Uh, and an event log, it will give an error message. So this is the baseline of OpenBMC, what we currently have and what we are heading to, uh, what it is, and uh, of course, what's the BMC itself. So if there are any questions, uh, you can reach me on the email, on Discord. Uh, just send me a mail or a, a message and uh, I will reply as fast as I can. I look forward to it. See you.